All right, let's go ahead and welcome uh, Washington head football coach Terry Ray to the show. Coach Ray, a great win for your team in a a shootout against John Marshall. High-scoring game, uh, comeback victory for your team. Just what did you take away from this one? It was another close game that your team was able to come out on top of. Uh, we we figured, uh, we also figured out that our kids are resilient and they understand that if we're in a close game, to win at any time. Cutting a little bit out there, uh, Coach Ray, for us, if you're moving around, try to stay in one spot, or if it's maybe just the weather. But uh, as we said, a big win for your team. We talked about this matchup last week, looked at the defenses of both sides, but yet it's the offenses that uh, shined in this one, and ultimately your side got the win. Just talk about the offensive performance. Uh, Michael did really well. Uh, He got beat up in Crossing area. We sat him the rest of the game after, like, midway through the second quarter. Uh, Braylon Holmes came in. And struggled a little bit early, but then he settled down into the second half, and we we're really uh, happy with the outcome to see that he could settle down and run our offense and able to manage it to uh, help us win the football game. Uh, Isaiah Beard had a uh, a breakout evening. Uh, he was he was all over the place. I think he had 265 yards and three touchdowns. Coach, you mentioned uh, Braylon coming in there and, and providing a spark once he once he got going and settled in. So, uh, obviously, you know, you have two quarterbacks that are pretty capable of getting the job done for your team. What does that do for your team moving forward in terms of helping and also possibly some of, some of those negatives of not being able to have both guys really on the field at the same time? Uh, we've been, we've been packaging in Bray most of the season. Uh, Braylon's he has that that ability to run the ball and extend plays. Not that Michael doesn't. Uh, Michael's more of a traditional back uh, drop back passer. Um, it benefits both of us. Uh, both using both of them to us, uh, we can do different things with both of them, which could obviously make defenses guess a little bit. Uh, negative wise, I really don't see anything. Michael and Bray work with each other. They're two of the biggest critics of one another, and they're constantly talking and helping. Uh, Michael was. When we sat Michael due to injuries for the rest of the game, he sat and cheered every time Bray came to sideline. They were talking about what they were seeing and so forth and so on. Coach Ray, it's one of the best starts, might even be the best start potentially in program history at Washington. Three and one start very close to being a four and oh start. Year two in the program for you as head coach just Tell us a little bit about uh, how much this start has meant to you guys to potentially give you a boost. Uh, it, it's definitely a momentum builder. Uh, we've been the cardiac kids too, and all like all three three of the four games that we played it. Uh, it, it's, it, it shows we're in the second year. The kids are buying into the system. Uh, they're, they trust the coaches. They're, they're trusting their teammates. Uh, it's big. We're getting ready to play Hedges or we're going into EPAC. Uh, we, we have confidence it's up, and we know we have to show up and play against Hedgesville. And, Coach, even with it being a shootout win for your team, your defense still made some big plays, forced a few turnovers. Uh, how big was that to see the defense get a few big stops in that kind of game where it's a lot of back and forth? I, I was happy with our defense. Uh, we had some communication breakdowns, gave up some big plays. We, we try to limit the big plays. But when it came down to when we needed our secondary and the defense to step up, uh, everybody redeemed themselves. Uh, Javon Jones gave up uh, two touchdowns early, but then late in the game made a really key third down and long or fourth down uh, conversion, knocking the ball down on a pass defense. And then late in the game when they were trying to come back, he, he iced it with an interception. Coach Ray, you mentioned earlier Michael went down with a uh, injury during last week's game. Has there been any update that you're able to share with uh, Long, maybe a status for him for Friday's game against Hedgesville? Uh, as of right now, uh, we're playing it day by day. Uh, 
You could see Michael out there. You might not see Michael out there. Uh, we're comfortable with Bray right now, but Michael could play. Michael may not play. It depends on what we get from our trainer throughout the week. And Coach Hedgesville this week, like we've mentioned now a few times, but uh, a team that's playing good football as well. So both programs playing well heading into this game. It feels like a very big game for uh, standings toward the end of the season. So just what are you seeing from Hedgesville so far this season and what are some of the challenges that they provide? Uh, Hedgesville is playing good football. Um, they're tough. They're gritty. Uh, they're going to pound the ball at us offensively. Uh, they do have pass threats. You have Gavin Young sitting out there. Their quarterback is a pretty good kid, sophomore. Uh, defensively, they keep everything in front of them. They try to limit stuff. I mean, I know last week they played Martinsburg, and that, that doesn't sh- tell a whole lot. But Hedgesville's playing good football. we got to be ready to play a football game on Friday. What do you think it'll come down to to be the big difference for you guys to get a win against Hedgesville? Uh, we got to not give up big plays on defense. Uh, we got to play consistent on defense. Offensively, we need to take what they give us. We, we need to get the ball in the end zone. In special teams, we need to limit mistakes or stop any kind of big plays on special teams. But I think it's going to come down to defense if on both sides of the ball for Hedgesville and for us. And Coach, uh, this is only your second year being a part of it, but Hedgesville and Washington have built a nice rivalry over the last few seasons because of the similarity of, I guess, the programs and the fact that they usually are are pretty competitive teams and also just uh, usually play a similar style as well. So what do you like about this matchup and uh, just, you know, getting another big EPAC game? Uh, I like the fact that I didn't know that we're going to be their first home game this year on their new turf. Um, There's definitely a rivalry uh, rivalry between two schools because – just the stuff you hear the kids walking around in hallways is talking about the Hedgesville-Washington game, not just in football, but in basketball and other sports. Uh, I like it. It's good. Coach Faircloth's doing a good job over there trying to build his program. Uh, I think this is going to be a big game for both of us. All right, Coach Ray, anything else? If not, we'll get to the uh, fun question and let you go. Shoot away. All right, you want to take it, Nick? Sure. Uh So our fun question this week is uh, if you were stranded on a deserted island and already had all the essentials, what would be the one item you'd want to bring with you? Oh, boy. Uh, I had all essentials and the one item I'd want to bring with me. I'd have to bring my dog with me. At least I'd have somebody to talk to. Yeah, there you go. There you go. (laughs) All right. Thank you, Kitch. I appreciate it, guys. Kitch Terry Ray.